Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark, and we are in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17, this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. In verse 16, Peter here is saying, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, that means if we suffer because we are a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Don't take that suffering and turn it into a negative thing that causes us to turn away from God or to turn away from his word. But he says, instead, glorify God because of that suffering. Don't take it negatively and go on home and start crying and, 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 regretting becoming a Christian. No, instead, turn it around and glorify God because you're accounted worthy to suffer for the name of Christ. And then he says, the reason, the reason why we take that suffering and glorify God with it is because, verse 17, for the time has come that judgment must begin, where? First, at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, then what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Now, the judgments here that are spoken of uh, to the believers and to the unbelievers are not, it's not the Bema Seat judgment or the White Throne judgment. Remember, the Bema Seat judgment and the White Throne judgment take place at the end of, uh, of this world's history, at the end of time. And the Bema Seat judgment is the judgment for believers. The white throne judgment is the judgment of unbelievers. All unbelievers throughout history are judged at the white throne judgment. And But he's not talking, Peter is not talking about that time, the judgments at the end of time. He says, for the time what is come, present tense. He's not talking about a future judgment. He says the time is, meaning right now there is a judgment. The time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. So God is performing a judgment right now. And it begins where? At the house of God with his children. So, the believer's judgment is the sufferings and persecutions that God allows here on earth to refine and to strengthen them. This is what he's talking about. It's the judgment of God. Again, and don't take it negatively that, well, God is judging his, his, his people, meaning that God hates his people. And he, no, it's not a, it's not a hateful thing. When it says, don't, don't take the word judgment and think that, well, God is against his people. God is judging them for sin. No, it's not. Judgment here means that God is, is refining his, his children. He's allowing them to go through sufferings and persecutions to purify them and to strengthen them. And as we said last lesson, to bring them into a wealthy place, a wealthy place, a place of tremendous wealth. Not wealth in anything of this world, which is going to pass away, but wealth in the things that continue on into eternity, which is the things that the grace of God, the, the, the patience of God, the love of God, these, the treasures of heaven. The unbeliever's judgment is the sufferings that God causes to them uh, to come to come to them because of rejecting the Savior. And God is now in a process of judging unbelievers here on earth because they reject the Savior. Now, because God is judging believers and unbelievers here on earth at this time, present time, does not mean that God is not going to judge them in the future at the end of time. No, that still is going to take place. The Bema Seat Judgment and the white throne judgment are still going to take place in heaven. But there are judgments that God is bringing 
upon the earth right now at this time. And this is what Peter is talking about. He says, for the time is come. And Peter here, Peter here said that the time has already come 2,000 years ago. So it must mean, it must mean that for the past 2,000 years, God has been actively allowing judgment or suffering to come to the body of Christ, to purify the church and to strengthen its faith. And that's what he's saying. That Peter, nobody back then in Peter's day had any idea that, that it would still continue 2,000 years later. <laughs> As I said in previous lessons, the apostles believed that Jesus was coming back soon after he died. You know, they, they it, again, Jesus was crucified. These letters that Peter and Paul and, and John wrote were 20 and 30 years after Jesus' resurrection into heaven. And they believed at that time that Jesus was coming soon. Could be any day in their time. So they had no, they had no idea that it would still be 2,000 years later and Jesus still hadn't come yet. They, 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 they didn't comprehend that in their, in their thinking. And so he says here, the time is come. And, but it means that throughout history, from the time even of Peter, when he wrote this, it's continuing. It still is here right now. And God is allowing his children and the body of Christ worldwide throughout history to experience sufferings and persecutions and judgment, in a sense, a judgment of God for the purpose because God loves us and because God wants us to be pure and in, in faith, trusting him and praying and loving and, 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 and building and, and getting strong in faith toward, toward God. So, for the past 2,000 years, God has been, in a sense, judging the body of Christ, the church, to purify it and to cleanse it and to make it more like him, to be, to be a witness and a testimony to this world. For the past 2,000 years, God has been dealing with the church, the body of Christ. And when God, listen, and when God is done with the church, then he will deal with the unsaved, meaning the tribulation period, when God judges the nations as to how they treated Christians. And when God, for, for the past 2,000 years, all these trials and all these things that have been going on have been for the sake of the body of Christ to purify it. But when God, but in time, there's coming a time when God says it's time to finish all of this. And that's what the book of Revelation is. The book of Revelation is God's testimony to the world. God telling the world that, that it's the, the time is done now. It's done. It's over. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to finish it all. And uh, there's going to be, you know, God is going to end sin. God's going to end the suffering. God's going to end. There is coming an end. And that's what the book of Revelation is. It's, it's, it's a testimony. It's God telling the people of the world, people of earth, that this, when you see this, it means that God is bringing it all to an end. And this is how he's going to do it. And that's what the book of Revelation is. It's God. It's, a, it's almost like a movie, like a picture of God saying, this is the end is now. I'm going to finish this all. And this is how I'm going to do it. So and in Matthew chapter five, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 25 and verses 31 through 46 uh, I'll read verse 31 and 32. It says, And when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered what? All nations. Nations will be gathered before him 
and he shall separate them one from another as a sheep divides his sheep as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goat so this here in uh, Matthew 25 31 through 46 deals with the judgment of nations and it's a judgment on how the nations treated not the Jewish nation, not the, not the Jewish people, but Christians. It's a judgment of nations on how they treated the body of Christ. All right, it's not it's it's not a judgment uh, of how they treated the Jewish nation. It's how they treated all believers, Gentiles and Jews, throughout throughout the last two thousand years. How they treated the body of Christ? Did they receive the body of Christ? Did they help the body of Christ? And, and Or did they reject the body of Christ? And that's what it is. It's a judgment of nations on how they treated the body of Christ. Not only, not only will individual unbelievers be judged by God, but also they will be judged according to their nationality and how they treated Christians. So not only will individual unbelievers be judged, but also nations will be judged. The, the uh, uh, America will be judged on how they treated Christians. Romania, China, Russia, uh, Brazil, uh, African countries, all every single nation will be brought before the Lord Jesus Christ and they will give an account on how they treated believers in Christ, how they treated the people that God sent to them to proclaim the good news. Doesn't matter if they're Jew or Gentile, how they treated the body of Christ, they will be judged on what they did to them. So it's a judgment of nations. And it says here, again, verse 17, for the time will come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, at the house of God, well, <laughs> then what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And you know, the ultimate end the ultimate end. What will the end be of them who do not obey the gospel? Well, the ultimate end is that they will end up in a lake of fire. Imagine, listen, imagine a place where Almighty God pours out his wrath upon Christ rejectors forever and ever. If you want, you can uh, go to my... YouTube channel and and pull up uh, under the extended teachings pull up my teaching on heaven and hell and it goes into much more detail about that but imagine a place imagine a place where Almighty God forever and ever and ever pours out his wrath upon Christ rejecting people you may not have you may not have to imagine it for very long and the reason is because in Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 66 and the very last the very last verse of the book of Isaiah verse 24 Isaiah 66:24 it says here and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of them of the men that have transgressed against me for their worm shall not die. Their worm not dying means their conscience. Their, their, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean like a person dies and they don't exist anymore. Oh no. Oh no. When they die, they are who they are. They, 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 their conscience is still there. The worm dies not, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. And it seems according to this verse of scripture, again, again, we take liberty, but it seems that God will allow the saved people 
the people who will enter into eternity, into glory, to view all the unsaved in the lake of fire before they go into heaven and before they have their tears wiped away. Tears being wiped away means all memory. When, when the Bible says that God will wipe away all tears from your eyes, it means there's coming a time. Listen, listen. There's coming a time when God will wipe away all memory of this existence. You're not going to be remembering uh, the country you lived in or the places you went or the times you had. There's coming a time when God's going to wipe it all away. And God's, and I, I think in a sense, God's going to have to do that. The reason is because if you have uh, family members, brothers, sisters, sons, daughters, mothers, fathers, friends who you've loved, and they never got saved, and you see them in, in, in hell, or maybe, maybe it doesn't happen, maybe, but, but you know that they are going to, when, when, when you stand before God and you see the glories of heaven and you, and, and maybe God gives us an opportunity to witness the white throne judgment where all the unsaved people are being judged by God and we see the seriousness of that judgment and we know in our hearts that the tremendous punishment that is coming their way and we see a loved one, a, a son or a daughter or, or, or a, a mother or father or whoever, aunt or uncle, or someone that we know, and we know that they are going to go into that lake of fire with tremendous torment forever and forever and forever. And, and I think God eventually will have to wipe away all memory, all men, because we couldn't take it. We wouldn't be able to, 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 to enter into eternity, into the glories of heaven, and yet to know and to have in the back of our mind that a loved one, our, our son or our daughter or our mother or father is in a place of tremendous, indescribable, indescribable suffering. It, it just wouldn't be glory then. God's going to have to wipe away all memory of this earth, of this existence. Because to remember this world is to remember sin, to remember suffering, to remember dying, to remember the pains of, 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 of persecution and, and rejection and, and, and the, the body decaying and the world around us decaying. So when he says here that God wipes away all tears from our eyes, I believe I believe, as as it's been as it's been ta taught, uh, that that God wipes away. Eventually, God will wipe away all memory of this existence and of people, and 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 all that we will have in heaven is God and our brothers and sisters in the Lord. If God, if God allows His own children to be purged and to suffer then it is certain that God will judge the unrighteous. Do not be, listen, do not be deceived into thinking that God will not judge the unsaved. The judgment of God against the unsaved will take place after, after he is finished with judging his own people first. And for 2,000 years, God has been judging his own people, the body of Christ, purging it and, and cleansing it and making it every, every throughout history as more Christians come and they die and more Christians come and God purges the body of Christ and, 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 and cleanses it and purifies it and strengthens it in faith. Eventually, there's coming a time when God says, that's it, now I'm going to end it all. And I'm going to judge the world and, and all unsaved. And God's going to bring an end to all of this existence. The justice of God requires him to at, le at some point visit the unsaved with the proper punishment for their rejection of God's unconditional love shown 
by his death and burial and resurrection. There will be a judgment for the unsaved for rejecting Christ. It will come. And that judgment will happen eventually at the white throne judgment where they will be judged for, not for their sins because their sins have been paid for. They will be judged for what they did with Christ, for rejecting Christ. All the times that God gave them to come to Christ, that he tried to, to, to uh, communicate to their heart, to give their heart to Christ, they will have to come and face God for why they rejected Christ. The end, the end will be an eternity in a lake that burns with fire forever and ever. And it will not end. And that's the judgment of God. It's a, it's a fire, it's a, uh, it's a lake that burns with fire. And as it says in Jude, the, the darkness, the darkness of, of, uh, that God's judgment is the utter darkness of this. So uh, you may think of fire as light, but I believe that the lake of fire will be a, a pitch black place, place of no, no light whatsoever, pitch black and into darkness. So he says here, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God first, and it has been. And if it begins at us, then what's the end of the unsaved? Well, a lake of fire. And God will judge. God is judging the church, the body of Christ here on earth now, to, to refine it and to get it ready to go enter into, to, into eternity with God as the bride of Christ. God is molding and, 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 and molding and shaping the body of Christ into the image and to be a bride of Jesus Christ, to enter into glory. But God is then eventually, God will judge the rest of the world, the unsaved. All right. Until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.